Hey YouTubers and RV fans, so if you can believe it, this is my RV life story part two. Now I have done multiple iterations of this video, but I'm not going to show you those outtakes because they're really no good. But anyway, the last time we left off, I was in Plumosa, Arizona on the BLM and we were hanging out with um, Dawn and Mike and you got to witness an amazing, breathtaking sunset. So, let me just remind you. Hey YouTubers and RV fans, I just wanted to spend some time today talking a little bit about my RV story. You know, it's interesting, when you have an amazing amount of growth on your channel, a lot of times new subscribers don't necessarily go back and watch all of your original videos. Shortly after I took off on my launch day, I found myself two days into my trip driving, 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 and the RV was doing really good, but I had a lot of intrepidation. I was really nervous that something was gonna break on the RV. If you recall from the videos, I had put in a lot of money and a lot of time into RV repairs. So I was a bit hesitant about the brakes. Um, I wasn't certain how the engine was gonna run, and so I was just really anxious to get to my first um, real stop where I was gonna spend a couple of nights and just chill out. So that's when we got into Alabama and I went to the Hilltop RV Park on Wilcox Road. Now I showed you a little bit of that video when I met RV Debs, which was wonderful. RV um, Debs and I spent some time on the phone prior to getting to Hilltop, so she knew I was coming. And my plan was only really to spend two days there. But some problems happened with my um, work schedule and the work schedule changed, which required me to be stationary. Well, little did I know that I was gonna be stationary for almost nine months in Lower Alabama. So let me show you a couple of out clips from the first couple of days I was there. Crazy storms, hanging out at the pier, just doing some really fun stuff with RB Devs. It was a great experience. This is what's over in Louisiana right now, and this is what's headed to Robertsdale in our neck of the woods here. So it's pretty ominous. Um, fortunately, RV Debs and I have a strategy. So we're, we're safe and we have our weather alerts ready to go. We've got our bags packed. And so we'll be, we'll be in, I think, good shape, hopefully. I don't know, this is my first time in a storm like this in an RV. I mean, I've gone through storms like this in Florida in a house, but never in an RV. All right, so I had only been a YouTuber for a very short period of time, but the time that I was, I had the opportunity to watch a lot of videos. And a lot of these people that I saw on YouTube, the doing the RV life, really inspired me and really made me wanna get out on the road and do this. Um, one of those people was Chico from Rufus and Doofus. Chico and I had a very close relationship um, by the time I was on the road. And actually, we were supposed to be on the road together, but he had some surgical interventions that had to take place, which prevented him from leaving in or around the same time I was leaving. But the one thing that um, I was excited to do was to meet Chico up at the hilltop. And so, but we'll get into that in just a second. Um, the f one person that I was really excited about meeting also was RV Debs. And I wanna show you a video clip of when I first got there and meeting RV Debs for the first time. So watch this. Guess who is here? <laughs> RV Debs! So nice to be here. Yay! I can't believe I finally meet RV Debs in the flesh. In the flesh, totally. I'm so glad to meet you, Patrick. 
All right, during my course of time in Alabama, RV Debs and I spent a lot of time together going out to dinner, and I didn't have a car at the time because I didn't have a tow dolly, which was the primary theme of everything going on in my life in the RV world. I didn't have a tow dolly. So as a result, I was not able to tow my car. So I let my son take my car to North Carolina, uh, where he lived, and he took the car there, and I had no car. So all I had was the RV to drive. And for those of you who have been watching my channel for a long time, you know that you're not gonna take a 26 foot RV out to go to the grocery store or you know, to stop at a convenience store and get uh, a carton of milk or anything. It's a pretty difficult task to break camp and move on with that. But of course, I didn't think that. I thought, well, he could take the car and I'll be fine. I'll just take the RV to Walmart, park it, and go shopping and do what I needed to do. Well, that wasn't as easy as I thought. Fortunately, RV Debs was a sweetheart and she took me to shopping trips and when she went out, she would ask me if I needed to go anywhere. And so I, I just still to this day, am so appreciative of what a sweet um, relationship I formed with RV Debs during my time at um, Hilltop and also during my time in Lower Alabama. We spent a lot of time together sharing stories and talking and um, it was great, it really was. Unfortunately, one of the things that happened to me um, when I was um, in Alabama is I started to become paralyzed because I didn't have a tow dolly. My son brought my car back um, three months into um, staying uh, at the um, hilltop and I just at that point realized that I was either gonna be stuck there or I was gonna have to buy a tow dolly. And being as cheap as I am, I really didn't want to spend $2,000 on a tow dolly. Even a used one um, was going to cost me about twelve dollars to 1400 bucks. <sighs> okay, so we'll get into the tow dolly later. So one of the highlights of my time in Lower Alabama, though, was meeting Chico for the first time. And I was so excited when Chico finally did get on the road. He got on the road and he made the trip to the hilltop from Vero Beach, Florida in one day. Now I told Chico, I said, you know, it's a long trip, man, don't, don't do that. And he's like, no, no, I'm gonna get there, I'm gonna get there. And so Chico drove all the way from Vero Beach to Robertsdale, Alabama in one day. And that was about 612 or so miles. And probably one of the longest trips that he had made in his um, Damon Intruder. Anyway, I wanna show you that video of when Chico got here. It was awesome, watch this. It looks kind of familiar to me. Not really sure who this is. I think one of my YouTube subscribers and one of the people that I'm subscribed to has a demon intruder. But who could it be? Who could it be? It's Rufus and Doofus. Hey Chico. Hey, how you doing, Patrick? Good to see you, man. Nice to see you. Welcome to Alabama. Buddy. Oh man, thank you for welcoming me. I'm loving it. And here's our buddy. That's Rufus, all excited. Rufus. Yeah, he's all excited. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we can cook some really good burgers, breakfast, eggs, all kinds of stuff on that. So tonight we're going to attempt a pork burger that we got at Win Dixie. Well, something crazy happens when you get three YouTubers and one RV park. You had RV Debs, who had quite a big um, audience, and you had Chico, who had a huge audience, and then you had my little channel, Paddy the Paddy Wagon at the time, um, and I had maybe 800 subscribers at the time. But as soon as the three of us got together, my channel just went right up. I think I hit like 12 or 1400 subscribers in like a matter of two weeks um, getting together with RV Debs and Chico. But the fun part about this is the three of us had such a great time. Chico absolutely loved Magnolia. Now Magnolia's was a buffet that had prime rib for 10, I think it was 10 bucks on Friday. So every Friday he'd be like, let's go, let's go. We're gonna go down to Magnolia's and get that prime rib. Let's get there early. So. <laughs> Anyway, we would go ahead and go down to Magnolia's and we'd get there early and um, we'd get there and we'd have our, our prime rib and shrimp and whatever other kind of amazing food they have because Magnolia's, Magnolia's in Foley, Alabama was wonderful. But then Chico did his own thing too. He went out and about and went to some biscuit factory where he had these biscuits and gravies and whatnot and he loved pizza so he would venture out on his own to do those things. But we used to have a lot of fun together when we were together, the three of us. So my time in Alabama at that point was really awesome. Of course, it was awesome from the beginning. I never really had any regrets. And in fact, I still look back at my time in Alabama with great memories uh, because it was the first 
you know, really the first eight months of my RV life. And it was so amazing to be with people that I had watched on YouTube um, for so long. Anyway, making a long story short, um, I found out that I was running out of money. And again, for those of you who are starting your RV life, you know that the biggest question that you have often is, how much does this cost? Well, um, I underestimated um, how much it was gonna cost me to live. And you know, I have to be honest with you, and I'm, this is the first time I'm really admitting this, but I tuck-tailed and ran as opposed to really working through the issues. And what I ended up doing is I ended up saying, that was it, um, I'm leaving the RV life. So I really thought long and hard about how I wanted to tell my subscribers this news. Um, it's probably been one of the hardest decisions that I've made in my life. And um, because I'm truly passionate about the RV life, but I am going to be stepping away from RV living, at least for the foreseeable future. Spent the next, I want to say close to six months living in Alabama, living in North Carolina working. Um, I felt like a caged rat. I want you to take a look at this video when I finally said I'm coming back um, and it was wonderful. It was like such a weight lifted off of my shoulders because living in an apartment and leaving the RV life was no good. I had Myrtle um, in storage and let me just tell you that I'm going to put a couple clips up there about me taking Myrtle out and exercising her and um, you know when I would visit because I would come down to Alabama to make sure the RV was okay and to start it up, run the gen and take her for a ride. Make sure that everything you know the fluids were sloshing around and whatnot so um, it was an amazing period of time and I got to spend a lot of time with my kids in North Carolina but I had such an incredible um, desire to be back uh, in the RV and really being focused on you know getting my RV life started because for whatever reason I was so paralyzed and I know a lot of it had to do with the fact that I was afraid that the RV was gonna break down and I just had such limited funds and you know a lot of people tell you just get out there and do it and that's true you know you really do need to just get out there and do it but the reality of it is is that you still have to support yourself and you still have to have enough money to make repairs and one of the things that I learned in beginning this RV life for myself and I relearned over over and over and over again is that repairs to the RV are not a hundred bucks you know they can be in the thousands and so I did have an extended warranty um, I did have insurance I did have roadside assistance I did have a tire plan I had all the things that I needed so that if something did go wrong I was gonna be okay I had saved up enough money working in North Carolina that I said you know what I'm heading back and, I, and I'm gonna do whatever it is I need to do to get on the road working from the road and moving forward and that's what I did so here's the videos a couple clips of me going down to Alabama exercising and then the day I left North Carolina it was 15 degrees heading down to to Alabama um, the cars packed up I mean packed up um, and <laughs> it's like I'm starting my launch all over again so take a look at these hey youtubers so it is 8.45 in the morning, I'm leaving Asheville, and probably about 18 degrees. Um, it's absolutely frigid up here. Um, big cold front Arctic air mass came in from Canada. Thanks, Lisa and Rob, appreciate it. Um, but it's, uh, it's kind of nice to know that I'm headed south and gonna get into some hopefully warmer weather, but from what I understand, it may not be much warmer. Well, I'm sure it's better than 18 degrees, or 15 degrees, or whatever the hell it is. So much to say, so many different kinds of feelings right now. Um, it's, it's hard to believe I'm headed back to the RV. Okay, YouTubers, so I'm sitting here 
looking at this incredible mess that I've got to put away. Somehow I ended up with a lot more stuff than I left with. Okay, so, so I get back to Alabama, I get moved back into Myrtle, and I gotta tell you, it was wonderful to be back. Uh, it was wonderful to see RV Debs again. By that point, um, Chico had already left and he was heading out uh, west and he was in Texas. Uh, and he was doing pretty well, he was, but he had stopped in Lafayette, Louisiana and had some terrible problems with bad gas. And unfortunately, that caused him to have some more issues with his, with his fuel pump. And you can see his channel for that. Just take a look at the bad gas video on Chico's channel from Lafayette, Louisiana. It was not good. But anyway, he, had, he was out, heading out west. And I was originally, when I first got on the road, I was originally gonna stop at Hilltop for two days and then head out to Louisiana and spend 30 days out with my mom in Lafayette, because that's where my mom was, uh, is. And so um, I kept thinking to myself, you know what, I really need to get out of here. I need to get moving. There's, there's no sense in me sitting around uh, in lower Alabama. I need to be out seeing the world, doing what I said I was gonna do. So no sooner did I say that, and all of a sudden I had things breaking on the RV. First thing that went was the air conditioner, gone. So next thing was um, I smelled propane. So my check valves and my regulator on the propane died. And then from there, it was just a, a, a cascading effect of repair after repair after repair. And I've gotta tell you, I had Good Sam's extended warranty and the Good Sam's extended warranty bundled all of the repairs I needed into one <laughs> claim and I only had one deductible. So repairs that could have cost upwards of two, three thousand dollars actually only cost me the deductible, which was wonderful. So a uh, shout out to Good Sam's for their extended warranty service. I had no issue with it. I ended up with a new um, air conditioner, uh, ended up with new regulator, new check valves across the RV, um, and some other things I can't even recall right now what, what I did. But anyway, the, the thing of it is is that at that point, um, the oil change was done on the RV, new air filters, lube filter, the oil was changed on the generator, um, everything was fixed. There was no more excuses for me. I needed to go. And I made the decision that I was gonna go to U-Haul and I was gonna rent a tow dolly. And no matter how scary it was to hook that tow dolly on the back of that RV, I'm heading out of town. So here's the video of me of me getting the tow dolly. Watch this. So I get the tow dolly and I'm driving down to Louisiana and surprisingly enough, it was really no big deal. You know, you make things in your mind to be worse than they truly are. And um, you know, one of the things my brother says is that 99% of the stuff that we worry about never comes, never comes true, which is really true. And for those of you who know me, who know my channel and know me enough, they know I'm a worrier. That's just how I am. So I get to Lafayette, Louisiana, and I stay at this lovely campground called the Bayou Wilderness in Karen Crow. People there are wonderful. A shout out to the Bayou, Bayou Wilderness in Karen Crow. They were just super, super sweet and a wonderful um, RV park to stay at. So if you're ever in Lafayette, Louisiana, please definitely look up uh, Bayou Wilderness. It's, you won't be disappointed. When I went to Louisiana, I spent some time you know, doing lots of things out there um, with my mom and with my sister. One of the things that I got to do when I was in Louisiana was go to Myrtle's Plantation. But more importantly, one of the things that was really exciting was meeting up with some more YouTubers. Um, Life in Serenity was Rob and Lisa, and also Some Days Here, which at that time was RV Adventure TV, and that was Daryl and Kim. And it was so awesome to meet them. I had been following them on YouTube for a long time. I had followed Daryl and Kim's adventures all the way through the mountains to, 
you know, with their Class A. Then when they when they traded in their Class A and got a fifth wheel, I followed them all the way out to Moab and to the Tetons and everywhere. And I had been following Rob and Lisa Life and Serenity for a long time as well as they were preparing to get on the road and as they eventually did get on the road and came to the States. It was so wonderful to meet them and to hang out with them and, and just spend some time getting to know each other. Now, I had met Kim and Daryl on my way to Louisiana, but it was a real brief meeting. But look who I'm here with. Rob. And Daryl. What's up, RV, Wagon? RV Adventure TV. Stop the madness, it's RV Adventure. And then there's Make Good Choices over here <laughs> with Lisa. And then there's the Cajun Queen. Lisa, Lisa and Kim, Yay. the Cajun Queens, I should say. We're headed up to Myrtle's Plantation, so we'll see you along the way. This is what it's like when That's YouTubers get together. <laughs> so I'm in Louisiana for, I think it's almost two months, and um, I get a phone call from my brother. And I said to him, I said, listen, I said, I really want to trade in this setup. I said, because it, it's not working for me. I don't want to be towing this car. I don't want to be doing, you know, taking this old RV out on the road anymore. I'm pretty much ready to go to a newer RV. And besides that, even though the RV was fixed and it was running beautiful and there was really no issues with it, I was ready for a setup that was a little bit more comfortable for me. And I wanted a truck and a trailer. So I got a truck. Okay, as most of you know, I have been looking at purchasing a new truck and look at it looky looky it's a Ford F-150 2017 um, beautiful vehicle just got it yesterday 4x4 and just a sleek pretty looking vehicle overall now the goal I have in mind for this is really to trade in Myrtle and purchase a travel trailer. And I was trying to get an RV up in um, Louisiana and I couldn't make a deal. They just, for some reason, they just did not want to make a deal with me, which was fine because I ended up um, calling my brother and talking with him and he said, you know, come on down to Florida. He said, let's go to, to the RV dealerships in Plant City. You know, they're huge and I know they'll make a deal with you. And I said, okay. So, my mother and I decide to go down to um, visit my brother and little did she know, she thought she was going on vacation <laughs> and really what I was doing was going down there to see about RVs. So we get in the car, we drive down to Sarasota, we spend some time at my brother's and then my brother and I go up to General RV in Plant City, Florida and really we just went to look. And um, my intention was really to look to see what kind of a deal I could make and also to kind of look at the kind of trailer I wanted because I wasn't certain what I wanted. I know I needed something that was pretty light. And so anyway, make a long story short, um, it wasn't, you know, very long before I was in the process of making a deal on a Wildwood by Heritage Glen, uh, which was a Hyperlight um, 26 foot uh, rear um, set up in full kitchen uh, RV. Um, fell in love with it. So here's the video of me getting that RV. Here it is. Okay guys, this is uh, I don't even know what this one is. Let me see if I, if I can tell you. It's the Forest River. Um, I know a lot of you are going to say, stay away from Forest River. But it's got the same design as the Jayco that I want. And that is that extended kitchen. <clears throat> it's got that extended kitchen as you can see with the countertops and you've got electrical underneath which is great you got lots of storage up in here lots of storage which is great and the one thing that I really love is the bathroom the bathroom is super terrific um, you got a large bathroom here with a good shower and you have to walk around in the bedroom too which is very nice as you can see it's pouring the rain have any way of making this any brighter but you've got a nice walk around bed full storage all the way through 
which is great. You got the dinette on a slide, and then you've got a nice living area right here. And so going all the way around really is a sweet RV. And this picture truly represented a change for me and the paddy wagon. It was at that moment that the channel changed names from the paddy wagon to paddy wagon travels. And I was now on the road and I had a new uh, intro that my brother did for me. And I'm going to show you that, which I'm sure you've seen them before, but let me just show you this one. Okay, so I'm on the road, I'm going down to Sarasota, I'm gonna hang out um, at one of the Encore Parks in Sarasota, which was hugely expensive. It's the middle of summer, the park's half empty, and they're charging you an arm and a leg to stay there for 30 days. I never will understand why RV parks charge an incredible amount of money in the summer for a parking space. You know, if you want me to pay for electricity, I'll pay for electricity, I'll have a problem with that. But to park and spend, you know, eight, uh, eight nine hundred dollars it just seems like it's highway robbery. So I had this phone call from Don and Mike, Mike and Don from Random Bits RV, and they were talking about heading up north, and I said, yeah, I'll travel with you up north. That would be wonderful to travel with folks. And I had met Mike and Don at Hilltop RV a year ago. And so it was wonderful to hear that from them and to meet them and for them to ask me if I wanted to travel with them. So yeah, I was absolutely, I was absolutely up for it. Okay, so I get to Jacksonville, I spend a week there with them, and you know, one of the nice things about traveling with Mike and Dawn is that Mike works full time during the week, and so do I. So it was really cool that we are able to travel on the weekends, get to our destination, set up, and then we work all week, and then we usually leave on Friday or Saturday and head to our next destination, or we may stay for a couple weeks or maybe even a month. So we were going up north, we ended up going into Asheville and staying at this sweet little RV park in Candler, North Carolina called Hominy Valley RV Park. And uh, Fred, if you're watching the video, thanks so much for a great time up there. It was a wonderful visit. So after um, I was in Asheville for that month and a half, I was ready to leave. So I went back down to Alabama. I hung out in Alabama for a short period of time and then I went back to Louisiana. Mike and Don then met me in Louisiana, and from there, we decided we were gonna to go to New Orleans. So here's a clip of us um, touring New Orleans, which was I awesome. just wanted to let you know, I'm going to New Orleans today with Random Bits RV. So this is Mike, and this is Don. Cafe Du Monde. And so here I am, Chico. I'm at the Cafe Du Monde, like you told me to be. So we're here at the Cafe Du Monde, and we got a table. This place is mob. Let me show you. So, Chico, you were right. But we made it. Now we get the afternoon slump taken care of. Okay, this is a post production. Um, part of the video where I realized the video is just getting really, really long for my RV Life Story Part 2. So guess what? That means we're going to have an RV Life Story Part 3. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed to Paddy Wagon Travels. And please share the video. Thanks and have a great day. Um, fair, uh, not fair hope to, um, um, jeez, oh, what's the name of this? 
Yeah, I'm convinced I'm losing my mind, but that's beside the point. Um, so yeah, so Chico drove all the way up from uh, Vero Beach. Now I'm probably gonna edit this because I just blotched it up. But anyway, um, if you're still watching me, which I hope you are, oh, I'm not even gonna say that. <laughs> this is crazy stuff. So it was so wonderful to meet them. Is that you? Huh.